Hey, good morning, everybody. It's Tom Christie back in the painting studio. I uh, want to apologize. I have a little head cold. I spent the last three days on my back in layout blinds in the cold weather uh, out chasing ducks and geese, and uh, I caught a little head cold, so I apologize for that. But uh, this morning's video I want to put together on advanced combing techniques. So I put together a video and I'll show you how to uh, find that video on vermicul combing vermiculation on a hunting decoy. This video just takes it kind of to the next level and I'll show you two or three different techniques you can use to, uh, to comb your birds. Uh, one is varying the size of the comb, like on the back of a greater scop, a lot of times the vermiculation will vary from thick to thin, and you can use combs to simulate that, make a very accurate portrayal of that, uh, that bird's back with combs. Then I'll show you kind of extra fine combing. That's another technique you can use like on a hen canvas back. Uh, and then I want to show you how to make your own custom comb. Uh, back in 1992, I was fortunate to win uh, the Lemon Steve Shooting Stool competition at the World Carving Championships with a Drake Gadwall. And I combed the, the breast of that bird, and I'll show you that bird in the competition magazine. Uh, but uh, it's a very effective way to quickly portray those lacy breast feathers on the front of a gadwall. And I'll show you how I make my own custom combs in that regard. I don't make that many custom combs, but that particular bird really lends itself to a custom comb. If you're valuing the content of my channel, please hit the subscribe button. Uh, I appreciate it and it helps me out. It's free, doesn't cost anything but it does help me out. So let's take a quick look at advanced combing techniques. Welcome back. So let's take a quick look at that previous combing video. And rather than search through all the videos, you can just use this magnifying glass icon. Click on that. It brings up a search area here. And if you put combing, in there and then hit return it brings up this combing vermiculation video so that will show you how to comb the basic combing on a hunting decoy and i've gotten great feedback on that from people that are are trying combing and really appreciate that uh, technique it's very effective so let's go back to the home screen and uh, i'm going to show you a quick view of this is that Gadwall Drake that I talked about, uh, in, and this is from the competition, 1992 competition magazine. It's kind of hard to see, but I just wanted to show you the breast of that bird. This is all combed in addition to the vermiculation on the back and sides. So let's talk about how to make a comb to do the breast of a Gadwall like that. All right, here's that handle I made in 1992. By the way, uh, I'm sure I'll get questions. Where do I get texturing combs? I looked, the James Company, J-A-Y-M-E-S Company, has texturing combs on their website, and also Willie McDonald at the Duck Blind. The Duck Blind is the company name. They have texturing combs uh, for sale as well. So here's that... Uh, one I made in 92, I just used an old paintbrush handle. I created this um, out of plastic and we'll talk about that. And on one side, I just taped in with electrician's tape, a little bit of a, uh, a needle. And that gives us a point that we can, you know, not gouge the decoy, but we want to swing an arc with this comb. And that gives you an anchor point to give you a nice, uh, arcing shape to those feathers. I've got a couple of Gadwall breast feathers here and I think what we'll do today is do an upgraded version of this and I want to use the actual breast feather from a Gadwall and create a new comb that I can use in uh, painting a Gadwall in the future. 
So we'll get busy on that. I'm going to get this feather taped down and we're going to want to not have it too splayed out there. But you can see these very distinctive scalloped markings and we'll use this feather to create that um, comb. The other thing I wanted to do is slide a darker value uh, behind the feather so we can see the the white tips here. They kind of fade out. Let's look at this other feather, same bird, but you can see the tip is actually black so there's a little bit there. So we're going to focus primarily on these lighter values in here and for purposes of this comb I'm going to assume this goes ahead and completes and we'll get a lighter value here, here, and here. So I'm going to take this out. And when we're looking at a comb, this is just a comb for example, this is going to take material away. This is going to leave, the gaps between teeth are going to leave material raised. And we want the white areas raised because I'm going to paint the feather black and then come back and hit the tops of those raised areas with the lighter value. So as we're designing our comb, we need to keep that in mind. All right, I've got, uh, I'm using plastic from an old drafting template. And uh, you may have a better source of material, but I found that drafting templates give you a good combination of stiffness and flexibility. And so I'm just using an old template that I no longer use and I don't make many of these, so it goes a long way. So I've got it cut 3 eighths of an inch wide so that the arc is 3 quarters of an inch wide. Now I just want to go in and uh, kind of give myself guidelines on where I need to cut out these areas. All right, I've got those marked, and now I'm just going to use my scissors to cut back oh an eighth of an inch or so quarter of an inch back into the template material got to work to keep these very narrow if i cut them too wide then the light areas are going to be too thick Okay, now I'll use my X-Acto to remove that material, and then we'll come back. All right, I've got those cut out, and I have a little stick pin, sewing pin, and some electrician's tape. And I'm laying this on one side of the template, and I've got to get it positioned so it extends beyond the end here a little bit but not too much. If it's too much, this will be too high off the surface. If it's too little, you won't be able to have an anchor point for the arc. So that looks about right. I'm going to use electrician's tape to tape that on to make kind of a waterproof assembly here. It's not pretty, but it does work. Now I'm just using an old paintbrush handle and laying that alongside this side of the template and taping that in place <clears throat> excuse me so I can use this as a handle to strike an arc I just used the electrician's tape to finish the attachment because this will have to be washed out it'll be dipped in paint so it needs to be kind of waterproof uh, so it doesn't fall apart on you all right let's try this thing out i'm using a combination of liquitex heavy body acrylic and a little bit of white gesso and laying this on pretty thick and i found that the thickness is critical to the if you get this material too thin, uh, you lose definition. 
if it's too thick, it's going to be hard to comb through and, and have a clean look. So that is critical. And you just have to try some different mixes to see what's going to work. Keep a paper towel handy. Now I'm going to start at the bottom here and strike an arc. And after each arc, wipe the material off. So that there's no material left on the comb. And then as we move up, I'm just kind of planning that the next arc will overlap those two a little bit. Sometimes you can get away with a couple of arcs before wiping. Make sure I'm in. But you can see the comb is making a nice arc shape. And you just have to play around with it. This is not easy. It takes some practice to get nice clean lines and a good result. The other thing you can do is vary the size of your comb. So you might want to make a smaller comb so that as you're approaching the the neck, these arcs get smaller. And I, I'm rushing this a little bit because I just want to demonstrate the technique and I'm not, this is probably not the best job I've ever done, but that's okay. You can see some of these I'm not wiping off between you just have to kind of see how the comb is performing. And sometimes leaving material on there is works well because there's more material to deposit back on the decoy. You just have to kind of play it by ear to get a good result. I hope you can see that in the video. Now, that particular one, I've got too much material built up. And so it's not allowing me to, the comb to unload. So I need to go back and clean some of that material off. And again, if you don't get a clean arc, you can just go back over the area. You may have to add more material. But I hope you can see that. I'm going to go ahead and finish this, and then we can come back and paint it and show you the total effect. I'm going to switch to my older comb because it's a little bit smaller, and you may have to go back and add a little bit more material if things are too thin. But I thought I could show you the varying the size of the comb and the effect that has. So this is slightly smaller arc. Let's make sure you can see. You can see I'm kind of interlocking and overlapping these arcs. But you can see that different size comb gives us a little tighter arc up in this area near the neck. And I like the way that looks. Now here's an area where there's just too much paint there. And I'm going to have to drag that off a little bit. Remove the material and then just go back add it because we want this surface to be relatively smooth to have the texture on it but not a bunch of gobs of paint that are going to look awkward 
when we go to highlight them. I hope you can see this. Um, again, here's another technique. You get closer up here and you can't uh, use the pen for the arc. You can hand arc these. I'll just do a few that way. You can see I'm kind of going back through this. You can't do this once the paint dries. So once it starts to set up, you're going to have a mess. So you have to work this while it's wet. As I'm working around the side here, I may choose to freehand some of these because these markings tend to open up. And they're going to start lining up with the vermiculation that's on the side pocket. If I were doing this for a competition, I would take a lot more time to make sure all of this is very clean. Uh, but for purposes of demonstration, I hope I've just shown you enough uh, to, to help in that breast combing approach. All right, now that that is thoroughly dried, by the way, I did take a little sandpaper, just uh, very fine sandpaper, run that over, hit the high spots, take those down so there are no snags or paint left that is going to create um, a problem when we go to highlight the, the combing. So I'm using carbon black. I'm just going to paint that right over the combing. And then I'll let that dry and we'll come back and do the highlighting just to kind of finish off the, the demo. And now I've got a little smoked pearl on a nice flat brush and hit that on a paper towel so we kind of unload some of the paint. And now I just want to go over the tops of these. Try to just hit the top of this combed structure. We don't want much paint on the brush because if, if it's too wet, it'll go down inside the combing where we want it to be nice and dark. And you can take multiple passes at this, kind of shift it around, go in the opposite direction, and gradually lighten those feather tips and the white combing, or the ridges that we put in with the comb. Same thing on this side. Hopefully you can see that in the video, that it's kind of gradually building up the intensity of that light color and leaving us with a real nice looking scalloped structure. That's what we're looking for. And I'm using the smoked pearl because I checked my reference over here and you can see the bright white behind this feather. This is actually a kind of an off-white with a little bit of a warmer hue, and that's why I'm going with the smoked pearl and not a bright white. Now I've got just a little bit more paint on the brush, but again, just trying to hit the tops, the ridges. So I'll finish this up uh, and then come back and let you take a look at it. But that's kind of what 
the process is, and again, I've rushed this. You can take your time. The other thing I would note is if you do happen to get down in some of these areas with your highlighting and you don't want white down in the base of the feather, you can just go back and touch those up and darken them up. You can also see here that smaller comb up near the top here really makes a nice transition from these larger scalloped feathers into the neck area. So I like that effect. And then the side areas where the, the markings are transitioning from this scallop breast into the tight vermiculation on the side. And there you go. Just show you, I'm going back with a little scrubber so that I can get some of these areas where the highlighting has gone down in the base of the feather and just using that to darken those back up. So we have nice, clean markings. Here's a good example. I've got something way down there. We can just darken that up. So I'll do that on the rest of this and then we'll be done and we can move on with other demos. All right, this next combing technique is about varying the uh, size of your combs or the coarseness of the comb and using a couple of different combs to give you the effect of heavier and lighter vermiculation, like on the back of a diver. And I've penciled in the feathers that I want to comb. And in this approach, I'm kind of going feather by feather and doing the combing of individual feathers so that you have some control on the shapes rather than just generic combing across everything. So I've got the more coarse comb and I'm gonna use it, it out here near the tip of this feather. And I'm gonna wipe that off on paper towel. I'm gonna go through that again and create some coarse texture on that feather and to vary that a bit as I get closer to the other feathers here I'm using a finer comb and I'm going to do the same thing then on the next feather this is that same mix that we used it's about 90% heavy body acrylic with 10% gesso. On this feather, I'm just going to use the fine comb and go in and create this back and forth texture. Like that. Go to this feather, which is overlapping. Actually, I'm going to go to this feather next. So this technique is feather by feather, as opposed to, like we said, just generic combing. I'm laying that on pretty thick so we got enough material to work with. Back to the coarse comb here. Zigzag through that. And 
and I don't want that left on the side pocket. This is a shoveler decoy, so I'm just using it uh, to demonstrate. Now I'll go with the, the finer comb again. And I can go ahead and overlap this feather because I can always come back and redo that. I'll put more material on. I'm going to pick up this feather in between here. Maybe I should have done this earlier. But you can see I'm just applying material on the feather I'm working on. Go with the coarse. This is an underlying feather. So I'm going to cut it off there and uh, that's why I was saying I should have done this first because now I have to come back to this feather and just go over it again and reestablish that. Okay, now I'm going to work on this feather. I've got a really fine comb. I'm going to see what that looks like on this particular feather. And that's probably too fine, but it's gonna give us some variation and that's what I'm trying to demonstrate. Now I'm going to this feather. I'll do a couple of more uh, because this is repetitive. So I just wanna show you enough to give you the concept it's okay if you overlap a little bit there. We can always come back and clean that off. So now I'm going with very coarse again. At the end of this feather. I'm going to smooth this out because I don't want that texture on the side pocket. Go back with the fine comb here at the base of this feather. And I'm wiping the combs off at, after each pass. Go back in here with these two feathers. Really one at a time, but you can work a little quicker if I'm just putting material on both. And then if I overlap a feather, it's okay. We can go back and clean that up. This is the coarse. Comb. Do fine at the base of this one. Oops, wrong comb. And I'll reestablish that material on that feather. So I guess the concept is use a couple of different combs and it gives you a nice some nice variation in the vermiculation what you see a lot of times on divers going with the fine comb then at the base of the feather again let's do one more here and then i'll finish up and come back with the results I'm back to the heavy comb. Really some zigzag patterns there. Wipe the excess off down here on the side pocket. Back to the fine comb at the base.
All right, and hopefully you can see that in the light, and I'll come back when I'm done here. We'll put some base coat paint and then some highlighting and show you what it looks like. Just one more technique is a super fine comb and for like the side pockets of a canvas back in, you might want to use a very fine vermiculation. And I'm gonna kind of visualize where the feather groups are, or the individual feathers here, wipe off in between. But rather than just do a kind of an all the way across combing, let's think about individual feathers and where they lie. This is almost getting too dry, so that's a, you've got to work fast when you're combing. If it starts to dry, it will begin to glob and get messy. Also, you've got to keep your comb clean. So keep water handy and paper towel so you can keep the grooves of your comb open. Anyway, I just wanted to show you what a fine comb looks like. So you can get very fine vermiculation on a bird with a comb. If you have a lot of patience and you want to use a comb instead of hand vermiculating, you can get a pretty accurate portrayal of vermiculation with a comb like this relatively quickly. Again, my paint is kind of drying out here, so I'm wetting the comb and going back over some of these areas while the paint is wet enough to move around. But you can see you get a very fine vermiculation with a fine comb like that. Now that this uh, vermiculation is, or the combing has dried, I'm just going in with some off-white. Just for demonstration purposes and uh, painting these right over the combed areas. So I'll get that painted white, and then we'll come back and do the highlighting of the vermiculation with the darker value. All right, now that that's dry, I'm coming back with some carbon black on a nice one inch flat brush. Wiped off most of the paint. And I'm gonna go in here and hit this vermiculation and just drag across it. And begin to pick up the the ridges in the combing and as the brush unloads paint I can begin scrubbing back and forth like this. You can see that's too wet. The brush is too wet, so it's beginning to leave streaks. We don't want that. So I might as well show that to you because I'm gonna have to go back and redo that. This brush is too wet at this point.
once it unloads, I can get pretty aggressive in going back and forth both directions and really picking up that vermiculation. It's a little messy because of uh, too much water, but I hope you can see the variation in the combing. That's very diver-like, and it's just a technique that you may want to use on a decoy. Uh, this is more for a more decorative end decoy. You wouldn't do this much combing work on a gunner, I don't think. If you do make a mistake and have too much water in the brush and leave some streaks like I did right here, it's very easy to go back with some of the off-white and just eliminate those uh, to correct the mistakes. So I'll do that in a few places here and then come back. So there you go. That's another technique you can try. I did this really quickly. If I was going to do this for a competition decoy, I would do some highlighting on the feathers to create some depth and uh, be a little cleaner with my application of the two different combs. But you get the gist by watching this technique and maybe you can use it for your own carvings. Okay, for the final step on this very tight fine vermiculation. I just painted the side pocket nimbus gray, kind of thinking hen canvas back here. And I'm using some uh, smoked pearl and a little scrubber to just scrub on a few feather tips. And again, I'm not trying to make a competition de decoy here, just trying to give you some potential tools in your toolkit that you can explore and uh, do a better job than I'm doing here with the concept. Anyway, I wanted to give it some feather structure here. Then I'm going to use just a little bit of the burnt umber mixed with Nimbus Gray and go in here and with the same scrubber really try to bring out this vermiculation very subtle and kind of fade it out as you go towards the tip of the feather Again, not, not much paint on the brush. Just enough to pick up and highlight some of that vermiculation. Now I'm using the smaller chisel shape in this case because it's still a nice flat brush that'll just hit the tops of this uh, these ridges that we've created but it also gives me some control since I'm kind of working in tight spaces and I only want to highlight the inside of the feather vermiculation With a tight comb like this, and if you take your time and work neatly, it really gives you a, a great representation of vermiculation. And it's a lot less time consuming than making each one of those individual lines. Sometimes more realistic, as a matter of fact, if it's well done. And I'm just building up the darkness in that burnt umber gradually. And then not hitting the tips so that we, I don't want to lose the, the tip highlighting. 
Okay. You can see I'm working really quickly here just to give you the concept. And then I would come back and pull some splits in, put some highlights in there. And by that, I'll just demonstrate quickly. A little burnt umber with the Nimbus Gray and a detail brush. We can go in and pull in some splits. and begin to develop more of a feathery look. And then with the smoked pearl, add some feather details, some feather barbs that cross over into the vermiculation and further enhance the look of the feather. Okay, quick and dirty. Here's just a quick shot of the three different techniques that we've talked about today. Hope that helps. All right, everybody, that's a wrap on advanced combing techniques. I know that was fast, but my goal is not to show you with precision how to do things. I just want to show you how I do certain techniques so that you can pull those up and add them to your toolkit and maybe the next decoy you're working on you can employ some of those techniques that i covered today until next time tom christie signing out good carving to you